we started this journey, it, it was, if I summarise, it was really just a joy-fueled exploration into something that a lot of people thought was impossible. We had not a shred of an idea of any sort of commercial or practical application. It was just one of those rare opportunities in life to go down a pathway that just looked fun. Here we are at San Diego Comic-Con 2017 uh, with what people are calling the real-life Iron Man. Can you introduce yourself, please? Indeed, I'm Richard Browning. I'm the founder and chief test pilot from Gravity. We built a jet engine-powered flying suit. Uh, there's no manual, there's no rule book for this, and we've had to really learn, for instance, to fly it on the vectors, thrust vectors. So that really means point the engines down, you go up, point them out, you go down again. Don't try and fly it with the throttles. Learnings like that have come about from just getting out and trying. And The original version, and it's changed slightly now, but let's talk about the original version. There was two jet engines on each arm, slightly spread out to create some stability, and two jet engines around my waist, pointing outwards. We originally had them on my legs, but it kind of worked, and I, you can see online on our, you know, my TED talk or on uh, gravity.co, you can see the footage of when we managed to fly it like that. With this fuel load, about 9,500 pounds or so, with the arm mounts as well. Problem is, it would dig holes in the ground, it made it very hard to fly on even tarmac, um, and you'd blow the engines up, as in they would destroy themselves, if you ingested any exhaust from the arm. So, they're higher up now, and that's much better. Um, and essentially, all you're doing is running these gas turbines. They are pushing out enough thrust to offset the weight of you and the equipment. But as you imagine, if you hold them out sideways, it's not very effective. The more you point them down, the more you go up. And that's the balance and stability and control. What got you into this? Are you an engineer first? Are you uh, just a uh, practitioner of the arts? I studied a bit of engineering, but I'd say I really grew up as a child, sort of making, taking things apart, breaking things in my, in my dad's workshop. I'm, I'm, I'm quite practical at making and understanding the, the physics and the engineering, but I'm, I'm not, I can't say I'm a, a, traditionally, you know, a traditionally trained engineer. I, I've, I've got a combination of technical kind of, I suppose, competence, but also a huge curiosity for stuff that looks interesting and exciting. I can hardly hold myself back from going and meddling at things. And I'd say 29 times out of 30, the people around me that say that's a waste of time, they're absolutely correct. But I do it for the finding the one in 30 that turns out to be something awesome. And yeah, yeah I guess this has turned into one of them. It's so great because so many people are content with seeing the stone unturned and you're like, no, no, I'm going to take that rock. And it's see it's a brutal process because so many times the stone rolls on your foot and it's a, it's a waste of time. <laughs> but it is cool when, I mean, this, this has gone off the scale from where we ever dare, dare imagine we'd get.